I ain't talking to everybody that, you know, want to get the foot off their neck, you know what I'm saying, from the legal, you know, system that uh, creates tyranny, you know, the people that are being bullied, you know, um, you know, they make it seem like it's the law when it's really legal and legal don't override law. So everyone needs to understand law so you can free yourself from whatever's going on, <clears throat> you know, going down with the um, young situation or whatever. Um, you know, casting over and everybody, you know, my heart goes out to all those dudes. So I figured, you know, we should use this um, situation or whatever just to, um, you know, try to enlighten each other and uh, wake each other up on how to defend ourselves in these courtrooms. Okay. Um, now, last video, we went over the 1724 Christian Black Codes. Uh, we read those and uh, we basically seen how the 1724 Christian Black Codes. Uh, the reason why that was so important to read because no one would ever really understand the courtroom until they know how they operate and what policies they go by. That's their number one policy, you know, uh, police officers, uh, courtrooms and, uh, you know, all little government agencies that operate on that. OK, so in 2017, 24 Christian black codes, remember uh, slave, you know, um, is not allowed to defend themselves or speak for themselves without their master, AKA the lawyer. Um, so if you white, uh, Negro, black, colored, Hispanic, Asian, or other, you're that slave. Okay. Um, so bottom line, I know that, you know, they would say that the, um, the, uh, the citizen, the Negro has no rights that the citizen has to respect. But at the end of the day, that's game because they, they slay in the citizen as well. I've sat in um, all types of courtrooms, like towns like Johnstown, upstate New York, um, where it's predominantly so-called white people. You know what I mean? And I've watched them get slayed, you know, for DUIs or, you know, other little mis miscellaneous crimes and stuff like that because they don't know any better. So when I became conscious, I seen that, damn, they don't know any better either. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and a lot of them get slayed. Uh, I want to go and show the Young Thug video real quick, all right? Uh, and I want to point something else out, okay, that uh, was very uh, imperative to what, what he got going on in there, all right? Um, I want to uh, focus. Last time we showed how Young Thug was just sitting there and he wasn't talking and the lawyer was talking for him or whatever, we, we went over all that, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, – I'm going to point out to you the flags – in the courtroom from a military standpoint, what they mean, okay? And uh, what comes first, all right? Mr. Steele, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. How are you, sir? Good, always good to see you. I feel the same, Your Honor. Always. You doing okay? I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I'm glad we were able to fit you in. Sorry you had to wait a minute. I appreciate your patience. Let me set up the case first. This is position 20, case number 22, CP 208957, Jeffrey Williams. And I want to say good afternoon to you, Mr. Williams. I'm Judge Wolf. This is your felony for each appearance. Good afternoon. We're doing this remotely. Okay. Hold on for a second. I just want to readjust the camera and I'm going to rewind that and take a better look at it. Okay. Because when I put the camera on there, uh, it's in reverse. So I'm going to face the camera straight up. Because it's very important that you kind of get what I'm trying to tell you. Right? Mr. Steele's case. Mr. Steele, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. How are you, sir? Good. Always good to see you. I feel the same, Your Honor. Always. You doing okay? I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I'm glad we were able to fit you in. Sorry you had to wait a minute. I appreciate your patience. Let me set up the case for this is position. Okay, he's apologizing to the lawyer and he's apologizing to the DA. Uh, for some reason, um, when I reverse the camera, it goes opposite direction. But when you look at this video, no matter how I put it, it still comes up the same way. All right? Now, hold on. All right. When you look at the video, okay, in the video, when it faces me, okay, the American flag, the Jolly Rancher, Okay, in real time, 
it's to the left of the judge. Okay. You ever notice like you watch movies and uh, you notice like they'll have like maybe two major stars in the movie, like say for instance, like a bad boy movie, like where you got two major stars like Will Smith and, and, and Martin Lawrence. I've never paid attention to that, but what I'm trying to say is that usually when, when, when we read as uh, human beings, right? Uh, we automatically, when you read a book, you automatically read from left to right. Okay. But in this video, when I turn the camera around, it's opposite. But when you look at it in real time, you used to go look at it in your own and you would see that, um, uh, the, the American flag is to the left of him. So usually like when you read a book, you start left to right. When you see a movie like Will Smith, Bad Boys, uh, Martin Lawrence, Bad Boys or whatever. OK, now this is how you know who's the real star in the movie, even though it's two stars in the movie. Whatever. If they put both of their names up at the same time on the screen, like Bad Boys, you know, with Martin Lawrence and Will Smith or Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. OK, they could put their names up at the same time. Whoever name is to the left of the screen is the bigger star in Hollywood. That's a fact. That's how they do it. You know, they don't actually explain this to you, but that's the fact. Now, in the military, um, sorry about that. One of my clients. All right, cool. All right, apologize about that. I got a lot of stuff going on. All right, I just want it's not going to be that long. It's going to be real quick. Now, in the military, the flag that's to the left, okay, shows you the flag that's dominant, that has the, the most power, that holds court. You understand what I'm saying? So, the American flag is to the left of the judge. So, meaning the American flag doesn't represent uh, nationalities. It, it doesn't represent uh, people. It represents the contract, the United States Constitution. So, meaning that's what he took an oath to. Now, the other flag we're not really going to get into, but the point is about the other flag is that the other flag is to the right of him. So, I mean, that's the one that doesn't have as much power as to the flag that's to the left. And if it's to... When you're looking at him, if you can see it on his left, that means it's on his right when he's sitting there facing you. So that's the flag he's supposed to honor because that's the highest law of the land. That's what that means. OK, so a lot of other things we can uh, go over about. But like I said, I want to go over this video uh, real quick one more time. And I wanted to point that out. OK, just listen real quick. And remember, 1724 Christian black codes, uh, uh, a slave you know negro black color hispanic white asian other you cannot defend yourself you cannot speak for yourself you need a master which they changed the word to the name lawyer today all right so just get a little brief you know input on it and watch how young thug of course ain't talking good afternoon we're doing this remotely because of covid you have the right to remain silent you're presumed innocent and you have the right to an attorney your lawyer mr Steele, is on the call so we start with you, Mr. Steele. This is a first appearance. Do you want to be heard on probable cause or just bond? Um, we will be heard on bond, general. Okay. So let me ask, is this your case, Mr. Smith? Yes, Judge. And is this part of that same indicted case or something different? That is correct. It is part of the uh, indicted case, Judge. Okay, and you could announce that first. Yes, so uh, these charges, uh, these warrants stem from uh, in the number 22 SC 22273, uh, as well, Your Honor. Uh, okay, 2273 and all that other, you know, bullshit he just said has nothing to do with representing the American flag, which represents the United States Constitution. That that district attorney, the so called black dude, that's who he is. He represents the district attorney bringing charges to um, Young Thug. All right. He took an oath to the United States Constitution. The lawyer that's representing Young Thug took an oath to uphold the United States Constitution. And the judge um, 
that's handling the case took an oath to uphold the United States Constitution. Now, let me tell you what that means. What that means is that they all took an oath that whoever they catch breaking a, a constitutional oath, each other man is supposed to defend the person that they're violating their constitutional rights. So they're all in cahoots together. So they're all doing that together. All right. Look, I don't really want this uh, to be like boring to people, you know, you know, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, this is something that needs to be really cool. Everybody wants to be tough. Everybody want to be gangster. And some people are. So if you feel you a real tough dude, if you feel you a real gangster or whatever, then you should know how to defend yourself in court. OK, because that's the only place you can't take your gang or your peoples. You got to stand on your own two feet like a real man or a real woman. You know what I'm saying so learning how to stand on your own two feet in the courtroom is very imperative and learning how to stand on your, your own two feet in the courtroom and going home, you know, is the gift that you would get when you learn this. OK, so those are just little things I wanted to point out. OK, um, we, we went over the last video and showed you how young thug was just being taken advantage of because he doesn't, you know, know any better. And, you know, my heart goes out to that brother and his family, of course. But we also want to use that because. From every uh, oppression, usually comes something good from it. You know what I mean? So with him being taken advantage of, what we want to do is we want to take that and we want to um, try to see if we can lighten everybody else to not go down that same rabbit hole that he's in right now. You know what I mean? In trouble and can't defend himself and depending on somebody that he don't even know who's really not his friend, who's posing as his friend. You know what I mean? And... Um, just taking his hard earned money and sending him to jail. Okay. Um, now I want to show you how that flag, the American flag, how much significant it has with the contract and the oath that the judge took. Okay. I'm going to show you another video. Okay. And I'm going to, when, when I show you this video, you know, pay attention. Like I told you before in the last video, so a wordplay. Okay. Give me a second. I should have had all this ready, you know, but uh, I just, you know, like the last live I did, I just jumped up. All right. This ain't the video I want to show you, but um, this is a, a real, one of my favorite videos. Uh, this is a European man. His name is Mountain Man. Uh, you know, I've you know, known him for a while. Uh, you know, in our world, you know, we all kind of run across each other because like Jay-Z said, less is more. So it's plenty of us. So it's not really big for people to, that know what I'm telling you about. But in our world, we run across each other because there's not a lot of us doing this. And the ones that do this, you know, get a lot of respect. And once you learn how to do this and defend yourself and, uh, you know, you'll walk the highest accolades of life for the rest of your life. You, you know, it's up to you to take care of yourself. You can't wait for somebody to give you something, do something. And this is something that we already all know. You know what I mean? So we just don't know how to do it in the courtroom. It's funny how they, they take you to school. Right. And, you know, you could talk to your doctor, you know what I'm saying? You can, you know, talk to your, you know, in, your client or your boss, if you work for yourself or whatever, whatever you do, you could talk to people in the street, but you don't know how to talk to the judge because the school never taught you that because they wanted to keep you, you know, in these loops. You know what I mean? So I want to go over this video real quick. It's not the video I was looking for, but it's kind of saying on the same subject of shutting the judge down and show you they have no power. Now, in this video is a little bit more probably more important because he talks about the American flag to the judge and he calls it the Jolly Rancher because that's what it is. Okay. So pay attention real quick. As myself and speak for myself in myself. And I am not the trustee over the old calf's name that you're operating on. But you're here in court today because you were charged with some charges. I'm here in court today because I am making a special visitation. This is not an apparent form of spirit. Hold on. I just want to see if it seems a little low, right? Let's see if I can turn it up. Oh, this could be that video. Living persons make special visitation. That's why I'm here to make sure that you guys don't tender my truthful proper name. Do you still live at 28 Flying Eagle in Manhattan? Well, it is a 
storage unit that I sleep in from time to time. All right. I live myself in this body. I am the living man. Mr. Kikalgate, you were here. You were seen by Mr. Cuts on 9 3 of 13. And you asked, at that time, he appointed you a public defender. Did you apply for the public defender? What use have I for a voice of room? All right, this video seems like it's hard to hear, but she's asking him, did he go for a public defender? She's trying to appoint him a lawyer because with a lawyer, she can get him under jurisdiction and, you know, take advantage of him. But he knows better. He knows what he's doing. All right. Just pay attention. I speak natural living man's English to you. It's called common English. That's the only thing that I work in. That's fine. There will be no legalese used here. Well, you were charged on the 31st of August of 2013 with obstructing a police officer in violation of 457302. You were also charged on the same date with resisting arrest in violation of 457301 of the Montana Code. Those men were charged by me right back by staging an overthrow of the Constitution of 1789, an overthrow of the Bill of Rights, an overthrow of my rights to forage for food, as a natural living person who was in hunger, I was searching for... Okay, so you see how he said he charged the cops right back for violating the United States Constitution of 1789, okay? Because he was fishing, and he didn't have a fishing license, okay? And this is where he's going at with that, okay? Let me give you that real quick. The case law on that is what he's saying, all right? I, I stopped the video so I could walk everybody through it. So they can understand exactly, you know, what's going on and, um, you know, they can break down what's really what he's being said. Because I know, it go, you know, Lord is not something everybody knows, so it can go over a lot of people's head. OK, um, what he's talking about is he's talking about um, Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. It's a, new, it's, it's a Supreme uh, Court case law. Murdoch versus Pennsylvania, 319 U.S. 105. No state can issue a license and engage a fee for it. And if they do, Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, Alabama, says you can ignore the license and fee and engage your right with impunity. So meaning you can go on anyway and don't even have the license, engage your right with impunity. It's your constitutional right. Okay? And that's what he's breaking down to the judge right now. Right, we're going to go back to the video real quick. Something to put in my stomach as I am recognized to be allowed to do by universal law has nothing to do with your corporate fiction. They violated everything, and furthermore, for your knowledge, they violated Judge Holly Brown's Title 26 United States Code ruling, which I went before her and prevailed on 21st March 2011. EPO 9-58A is the case number wherein she evidenced that I am not a taxpayer because I am not a federal citizen. Federal law trumps state law at every turn. I have nine judge rulings to that end, and that trumps state law. I am not registered crap. I am the living man, and I have the right to forage for food when I'm hungry. All right, he's breaking that down, and he's pretty good at what he does. Um, <clears throat> now, what he's explaining to uh, right there is that he's not a, a taxpayer and he's not a, a corporate fiction person because usually when they charge you for like driving out a license, fishing without a license, you know, um, a license for whatever, you know, trying to sell merchandise on the corner or the street or whatever, they try to hit you with charges for that. Okay. And um, usually when they do that, when they charge you, the, 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 the charges in all capital letters. Okay. That's the straw man. OK, by you being the living flesh and blood human being that you naturally are, you know, uh, the interest, let's just take a name like, you know, Mike McCannahan. Let's just use the name out of it. All right. So it'll be capital M. All right. Everything else lower case. His last name, McConaughey, it'd be capital M, 
and everything lowercase. That proves that he's a living flesh and blood man because a human being cannot have their name in all caps. Like if you go past like Macy's or KFC or um, any other company, usually those companies, when you look at their, um, when you look at Macy's, it's in all caps. It's a corporation. Only corporations can be in all caps. So when you go to your birth certificate and you go to your social security card, those things are in all caps. Okay. So therefore they're trying to charge you in all caps. You know, you, you, your birth certificate ain't got a post. Your birth certificate can't breathe. Your social security card can't breathe, but you can. Okay. You're the beneficiary and that's what he's breaking down. All right, let's go back to the video. But you're here on different charges. That this is, is not Molly stand. Brown's courtroom. Ma'am, you can argue this all day long. You're operating I'm on telling, corporate fiction. I'm telling you, we are on some charges which were filed in three courts. I do not number understand one, those charges. Number one, you keep interrupting me, and I'm going to charge you with contempt, and you'll go to oh, jail. Contempt of court is spelled C O double N. I know about calling this navigation. Sir, is the story. I said, be don't quiet touch until me. I get don't through touch with me. This. You ain't a gun. Don't you touch me. I am the living man protected by universal law. You keep talking, that. and you're going to be charged with contempt, and you're going to go to jail. You have already contempted this place. No, I told you I would if you are trying to quit. get down here. These are the living witnesses to what you're trying to do. Very you good. are trying to create a fictitious fraudulent action. You are trying to build the Federal Reserve by securitizing Sir? an all caps commercialized Sir? name and notifying them that the they Office. that they are standing right. in debt now. If you touch me, you will violate natural law. Do not come near me. I am then protected shush, by the land. Shush. You're not telling me to shut up. I, I am, am the living natural man, and my voice will be heard. That is the Jolly Roger. That thing you call the American flag with the gold fringe around it is the Jolly Roger, and you are acting as one of his privateers. Okay. You're here on the charge of arrest. I'm here arrest. by a special visitation. Right. And uh, we're going to stop right there. All right. Now, all right. Let me break down to you what he's doing. Okay. This is the Black's Law Dictionary. Uh, this, this is... Um, the fourth edition there's a lot of editions out there they're kind of hard to find the reason why this dictionary is so imperative to have because these were the only dictionaries around back in 1789 when the united states constitution was written okay so it's the number one law book for lawyers that they won't let you see it's the number one uh, law book for any sovereign person that understands and know how to stand on their own two feet okay now like i told you before you don't have to listen to the judge i said that in the last video He's proven that to you. He don't, he's the judge told me, shut up. He told the judge to shut up. You see what I'm saying? You don't got to listen to her because you're not a part of a private corporation. Okay. So real quick, we're going to get back to that video in one second. But he said, when she said to him, you're here on whatever charge she tried to say, right? I call it the Jolly Rancher, but he said the Jolly Roger. <laughs> he was talking about the American flag. But he said he was there on a special appearance. He said he was there on special visitation. Okay. So I'm going to go so over something with y'all real quick. So as when the judge say that to you, how do you appear? You never appear. You're on a special appearance. Okay. And I'm going to go into the law book dictionary so you understand exactly what that means. Okay. Um, give me a second. Sorry, phone going off and stuff. People always do this when you're trying to do something, you know. Usually when you ain't got nothing to do, nobody think about you. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. All right. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, look at it right here. It says it right there. Special appearance. Okay. All right, now. I'm going to break down. I'm going to read it out to y'all so you know that's what he's telling the judge. And the judge knows what he's saying, but she keeps ignoring him because she's trying to move forward with her procedure. But he's being he's giving her a hard time because, like I said, if you don't consent, there's nothing they can do. All right. Uh, a special appearance, a defendant pleading that either claims that the court lacks personal jurisdiction over the defendant 
or objects to improper service of process. A defendant showing up in the court for the sole purpose of contesting the court's assertion over personal jurisdiction over the defendant. So he's only showing up to court to let them know you don't got no jurisdiction over me. And I'm not here, you know, to actually give you jurisdiction. I'm not participating in, you know, your corporate rules and bullshit laws. Well, bullshit legal, because if it was really law, they would they would honor it. They don't honor the law. You know what I mean? They break the law, you know, but they took an oath to uphold the law and they don't because they take advantage of people that don't know any better. All right. Let's get back to the video. To each charge could be up to a five hundred dollar fine, up to six months in jail. I do not understand any charges. I only understand universal law. Okay, now you see how he broke that down. She told him she's trying to proceed and hit him with the threats and all that. And he said he do, he do not understand any charges. Okay, now this is a good book right here for everybody to probably go out there and get this is a common law handbook for jurors sheriffs bailiffs and justices okay and in this book it explains to you that when an officer or a judge asks you if you understand it's a trick question like me if i talk to you i'm like oh you understand you know i'm being genuine I'm, I'm genuinely asking you do you comprehend what i say but when a judge asks you that or a cop asks you that they're asking you, do you stand under the jurisdiction of the court? So I don't care what they ask you. If they ask you what you understand, you don't. And that's why he said he don't understand, because he's not standing under the jurisdiction of the court. It's a trick question. You don't ever give them your name, and you don't ever tell them your address, because once you give them that, you're under their jurisdiction. You don't got to tell them where you live. I'm going to show you another video on that, too. We're going to get back to this. Let's get back to the video. Where to live. Well, to live in peace guilty. and to live as I need to. You said not guilty in this. In this I court. never plead. Animals plead. Sound like that. Point, point. I have a paper with your people. She said you never plead. You never cop a plea. You don't plead because when you plead, you're under the jurisdiction. Okay? You answer in the form of demir. We're going to go over that word in a little bit, too. You never plead. You're not there to plea. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They trick you under their jurisdiction. Go oh, plead not guilty. You don't plead anything. That's their shit. You don't. No, nah, I'm not. You no. Know. So most people think they plead not guilty. They got a better shot. No, when you plead, you're under their jurisdiction. The bottom line is to get money out of you, whether they lock you up and get the money out of you or whether they just get the money out of your pocket. Don't ever plead. It says prime evidence standing right through it. You bring forward all natural forms of evidence that I'm not prime evidence. I am the living soil. The dirt, the water, and the air has its own voice, does it not? It all supports Sir? forms of life, does it not? I am a part of that life. I am not your corporate creature. Sir? Do not danger me. You're here today on an omnibus hearing. We've already pled not I am guilty. here by special visitation to see to it that you do not danger my natural living man's name. Are you prepared That's to tell I'm the court here. if you wish to go to trial on this matter? This is a trial. Tell no, me it's this not. isn't a trial. Here's my this jury is an of my hearing, sir. You cannot produce a jury of my peer because all juries are selected from a pool of registered voters, and the instant a person registers to vote, their natural ability is a peer to comprehend. Natural law has been dissolved and okay. turned into fiction. There this cannot be raised a jury of okay. my peer. It cannot okay. be done. Excuse me for just a moment. No way. Get back here and finish this. Hey, hey, get back here and finish this. The judge has left the courtroom. There you go. You okay. yeah. There is nobody in this courtroom. Yeah. The yeah. judge has yeah. walked out. Judge has walked out. Everybody I said no out. excuse. Everybody up and out. I'm not letting you Up and out. That's it. Up and out. Up and out. Yeah. Oh, man. Look. See? See the judge? She's right there. She's right there. He walked right by. Now, if you notice in the video when she told the the uh bailiff to put him in contempt of court, 
the bailiff wouldn't touch him. The bailiff is scared of him. See, when you know your rights, they all get scared of you, yo. Just like the more brother I showed you yesterday or the other day when he took his kid back. They were afraid of him. You don't ask for justice. You're supposed to know justice. No one's going to give you your rights but you. So that's masonry. Whoever leaves, that's like playing chess. A lot of chess players out there watching. Whoever plays chess, whoever walks away from the chessboard, loses. The judge walked away from the chessboard. Case dismissed. Okay? Now, I'm going to go back, and I want to read to you the power he has to do that. Okay? And he knows his power. He knows his power very well. Um, he's got a lot of videos out there, too. You know? Um all right. Marshall versus Kansas City, Missouri. Police power is to exercise the right of a sovereign right of a government to promote order, safety, security, health, morals, and general welfare within constitutional limits as an essential attribute of government. Marshall versus Kansas City, Missouri. 355-SW-2D-877-883. OK, so let's read that again and break it down so y'all can understand. Marshall versus Kansas City, Missouri. Police power is the exercise of a sovereign right. So you really have the police power, not them. Okay? And of a right of government, we have the right of we we are the government. We are the we the people. The, the constitution start off with we the people. I told you in another video, they work for us. We don't work for them. They're the servants. We're not. Got to stop letting them play you like you a servant. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh all right, so back to all right, sovereign right of a government to promote order, safety, security, health, morals, and general welfare within constitutional limits. We have the right to promote, you know what I'm saying, general welfare, general safety, and moral um, 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 constitutional rights. We have, and that's what he was doing. So when the judge walked out the courtroom, that automatically gave him a right to dismiss the case. You understand what I'm saying? That's very, very important to understand that. Okay. So the reason I break this down, I actually give you the case law and then I actually show you the actions of it in court for people that's doing it. Okay. Now I want to go to the other video I wanted to show you, which is a little shorter. All right. Um, and notice the, the bailiff wouldn't touch him. The bailiff was scared because if the bailiff touched him and the other video I showed you when the more was uh, t telling the judge, you know, he was shutting him down. And remember, he asked, he's like, yo, what's your name? Because I'm suing all of y'all. You can put a lien on that bailiff. If he owns a house, he got a car, he got a fishing boat, you could take all that shit from him. You could put a lien on the judge. That's why they won't touch him. You know what I'm saying? You, you can actually own them. In the first video I showed you the other day when the guy took his, uh, his son back from the cops, he told the cop, if you touch me, I'm going to own your ass. That's why the cop didn't touch him. Because whatever the cop owned, he can take from him. And the cop knew that. That's why he wouldn't touch him. But if he was Negro, black, colored, white, Asian, or other, he'd have got his ass whipped. They would have beat him up and then charged him with assault. That's what that's the dirty shit that they do. All right. Let me go to this next video real quick. And I want y'all to see. All right. Give me a second, y'all. I hate doing this to y'all. <laughs> All right, come on. This is one of my favorite videos because he breaks down the name game. You know what I mean? And um, like I said, no name, no game. They don't got nothing on you if you don't got no name. You know, um, it's a lot of it's a lot of little ways to you know it's a lot of videos to overcover and do this. Like I said, I got years and years of experience under my belt. You know what I mean? And it didn't happen overnight. I went to court. You know, lost. Didn't know what I was doing but I was brave enough to throw the rock. And when you throw the rock, you know what I'm saying? You might make a mistake, 
but you got the courage to throw it. And all you could do is learn from your mistakes. You know, Mayweather didn't become the greatest boxer overnight. Like Mayweather said something great. He said, I make tons of mistakes, but I make them in my gym. So that way I'm perfect fight night. So you got to keep practicing. You know what I'm saying? Don't get scared. You know what I mean? You don't have to listen to nothing the judge tell you. I don't give a fuck. Oh, sit down. We're going to call this place back. Nah, I can't do that. You know, like I said, you don't have to listen to him. You know what I'm saying? At all. You got to be careful because they got a lot of other videos out there. This is becoming real popular these days. So they got videos out there trying to show you that, um, you know, uh, you know, fake videos trying to say sovereigns and moors or you know going to jail and you know that's all bullshit you know you gotta like i said if you study you'll know right from wrong you'll know real from fake you know what i'm saying all that stuff is very very important you know what i'm saying to know to defend yourself all right if i can't find this one I got another one that, you know, because I got a few uh, notes that I wanted to go over with y'all. Um, All right, cool. I don't want to take what they look up for this one, but I'll find it next time and already have things ready. I'll be a little bit more. This is like my second live, so uh, y'all got to deal with me, all right? But um, here. All right. Matter of fact, this is a good video. All right. Um, but I'm going to go back to that one. I just want to show you my man in court. I learned a lot off this dude right here. All right. Like I said, we're going back to Jersey. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to see how he doesn't answer questions and how he doesn't let the judge back him down. All right. Here we go. All right. That'd be great. All right. Sir, you've had an opportunity to consult. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just for the record. Same judge that I showed you, but this is his man. She was trying them different. The other guy I showed you was a little bit more heavy set, and that was when I said he was suing everybody. He's he's a he he's a little bit more aggressive and more straightforward and emotional, but he knows his stuff. This is his this is his uh, comrade. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know he he you know this dude is really good. He actually did uh he would teach mock classes with Todd Shreve Bay and other um moors and stuff like that. And he's really really good. He knows the courtroom like the back of his hand. You know what I mean? Um, but check him out. Uh, I'm a Moorish American, Aboriginal, Indigenous man. Hold on, I'm going to write this down. Moorish American, Aboriginal, Indigenous man. You're talking too fast. Moorish American, Aboriginal, Aboriginal, Indigenous, sovereign man. Okay? And as far as jurisdiction, man, according to case law... Let's go back. No lawyer. 1724 Christian Black Code said... A slave cannot defend himself without his master, a.k.a. the lawyer. He don't got that. All right? Learn how to stand on your own two feet in court. That's the only way you could ever be a real man. Supreme Court statutes. There's no discretion to ignore lack of jurisdiction. See, Sir, Montana? I'm going to interrupt you because I'm going to repeat once again. We haven't even gotten to the issue of jurisdiction yet. The issue is whether you are going to appear in this courtroom with an attorney or without an attorney. Simply that small issue. Understand, I understand. After concern, we decide man. that issue, we will then move on to the issue of whether this court has jurisdiction over you, whether the charges are against you, all of those things. But I understand, for today, man. I just, I, must, I just must say, man. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? 
She's trying to control the narrative. He won't let her because you don't have to. They need your consent. To add on to what you're saying, jurisdiction for the record can be challenged at any time. See Lantana versus Hopper. I'm just raising jurisdiction now, man. Asserting my prosecutor sitting there with his hands folded. The prosecutor got a lot to say in the Young Thug case because Young Thug ain't defending himself. He's not aware of what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? Let me read something to you real quick from the Bible. Okay. I'm going to read something to you real quick from the Bible. All right. Uh, uh, Proverbs 3.13. All right. This is from the Bible. Happy is the man who, who findeth wisdom and getteth understanding. So if you want your happiness, you have to understand your wisdom and get of understanding in these courtrooms and you'll be a free man trust me you will be a free man let's back to the video constitutional right and jurisdiction hasn't been proven i haven't even had a rebuttal from the, uh, from the prosecutor man there hasn't even been prosecutor can't rebut because he can't it's not they're not talking statutes and penal codes he's talking his constitutional oath so that's gonna make the prosecutor sit down and shut the fuck up like he's supposed to see him there with his hands folded right but the prosecutor in the young thug case he running his goddamn mouth this judge is not supposed to be an arbitrator i haven't had a rebuttal once from the prosecutor, I can prosecutor. You, I am not an well now that's what i went back and told you we're going to cover that another time too the judge is supposed to be the juror in fact the prosecutor is supposed to be why is he arguing with the judge because the judge is helping the prosecutor because the judge more than likely is a part is a part of the bar association which is illegal okay um i'm not going to wait to cover this i'm going to show you guys this right now okay uh hold on this is very important that you know this because this is how you get the judge disqualified all right okay right here remember this like i said when you come to my live you know you you, you want to you know what I'm saying come with a pen a paper google you know what i mean and be smarter than who you was when you got here now title sex title usc all right that's united states code usc title 28 section 455 okay google that all right okay now this is this is united states code these are their laws that they're supposed to abide by okay all right now any justice judge or magistrate judge of the united states shall disqualify himself in any proceeding in which this is impartially might be reasonably questions he shall be disqualified in the following circumstances where he has a personal bias or prejudice concerning a party or personal knowledge of disputed evident uh ev facts concerning the proceedings where in a private practice he served as a lawyer in the matter controversy or a lawyer within the previous practice law served during such association as a lawyer concerning the matter so what that means if the judge used to be a lawyer he got to disqualify himself because he's on the same side as the prosecutor the prosecutor's a lawyer so that means you're a part of the bar association you're in the same gang that's a conflict of interest that's why the judge is talking because she's a part of the bar association and he knows that Okay, write that down. USC, that stands for United States Code, Title 28, Section 455, and keep it, because there's a lot of judges that's not real judges, they're magistrates, and a magistrate is not a real judge, and that's what they are. And you can call up, I've done this. You can call, and you one thing about them, they won't give you no problem. They won't even ask you who you are. You call up the bar, whatever state you live in, whatever town you live in, call the bar association. And be like, yeah, um, there's uh such and such, such and such on the bar association. I'd be like, oh yeah, he's a he's a when was his last membership due? So his last membership juice was the July. When's his next membership juice? Oh, his next membership juice is July 15th, such a okay, thank you very much. And that's proof right there. Remember that USC title 28, section 455, how to disqualify a judge from your case. See, you gotta learn how to stop letting them proceed. And destroying you all they know is procedure 
You know what I'm saying? And once you stop that and you don't consent, you ain't got no case. Let's go back to the video. I've given, we, we, I've sent plenty of documentation asking for the returning of the documentation that the prosecutor uh, office holds in regards to the fact of my identity and it proving that the state has no jurisdiction. And jurisdiction, again, can be challenged at any time. See Lantana versus Hopper. Uh, the burden shifts to the courts to prove jurisdiction. See 100 SCT 2502. There's no discretion to ignore a lack of jurisdiction. See Rosemont versus Lambert 46 9 F2D 416. So, with that being said, man, can jurisdiction be proven for the record? I'm here under threat of Western coercion. Because I'm here, I'm not here on my own free will other than threat of Western coercion. On the uh, bell guidance sheets that was signed. That was another thing that the other more bread brother, his comrade did. Like you always let them know I'm under because they're threatening you. If you don't come to court, you'll have a warrant out for your arrest and you'll be in jail. So they threaten you to come to court. So you let them know I'm handed threat, duress, and coercion under a special appearance. Now you want to write that down too. All right. Let's read that one more time. Special appearance, a defendant pleading the or pleading either claims that the court lacks personal jurisdiction over the defendant or objects to an improper service of process. Defendant showing up in the court for the sole purpose of contesting the court assertion of personal jurisdiction over the defendant. Always remember that word, remember, special appearance, because the judge, how do you appear before the court? I don't appear, I'm here on a special appearance. They're gonna try to ignore you, but they know what you mean. There's words that I would use, and like you see how she keep ignoring him when he's trying to read the constitution and stuff like that, they usually try to ignore you. But these are the words they can't ignore. I can't. I don't consent. The judge is going to stop. Um, it's uh, one of my good, good, good close friends for over twenty years, Kelly. I had trained her, and um, when I, I would tell a judge, I don't consent. They were like, yeah, "We don't need your consent. I'm the judge." They don't like that word because they can't get around it. So I would always say, "I don't consent." And I, I took, I went with her to court one day. She was in some fake courtroom, but she said that to the judge. She said. I don't consent. The judge said, I, and the, see, the only thing is that the judge didn't know who she, he didn't know what she knew. So he made a mistake and called her to, 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 to the bench when people were still in the courtroom. Usually when they know who you are and they know how you're going to come at them, they call you last because they don't want people in the courtroom to hear what you got to say because they're going to wake the other people up and they're going to start doing the same thing and they're going to be out of business. Okay. So she said, oh, um, I don't consent. And the judge said, I don't need your consent. You have, and I said, when he tells you that, don't bat. She said, you absolutely need my consent. Da, da, da. So he whispered and says, case dismissed. And she won the case. See, so those are words they can't ignore. Because if you put it on the record for the record, let the record show, I don't consent. They need that. They, you know, they need that. Let's go back to the video. Is in science of that. That's who originally was charged. If you amend the court records to say and reflect that Brandon Casimir is also known as Cheyenne Cushmere Ill or Cheyenne Matola Cushmere Ill, or any and all the risks, that would be uh, improper and that would be illegal and unlawful because I'm not also known as Brandon Casimir. The documentation that was given to the officer was given when he asked. I gave him authentic documentation from the state of New Jersey. That was authenticated, excuse me, correction, authenticated by the state of New Jersey. That officer had no jurisdiction. He asked me I was traveling. I said, Timbuktu. This land is indigenously called Timbuktu. I have the right to assert that right according yeah. to Article 6 of the treaty. I'm going to interrupt you. There are some people that believe that this is the state of New Jersey. You may not believe that. But there are people that believe that this is the state of New Jersey. Belief is not reason and facts, man. So... Because the state of New Jersey gives out authentication documentation on West State Street in Trenton, New Jersey, that's why I know the state of New Jersey to exist that. The state of New Jersey is not the soil of the land. So if anyone thinks that the state of New Jersey is the soil of the land, they are sadly mistaken. Well, I think that there are probably some people that believe that you are sadly mistaken. But that is not the issue today. If you wish to address the issues... I have brought before that. No, no. My issue today is: Are you going to appear with a lawyer? 
or are you going to appear without a lawyer? That is the only trying to put that mask on them. 1724 Christian Black Holds. You cannot be punished without the presence of your master, aka lawyer. They switched the word from master to lawyer. See, but he's going back to jurisdiction. If you notice, who's in control here? He is. This judge is pretty stern. Like I said, Jersey's tough. Now, I've been in courtrooms where I stomp judges out, body them niggas. They don't want nothing to do with me. They don't. So what they do when they see that you know what you're doing, when you go back to court, they'll switch. Like I've had I've been in courtrooms where um is the judge is up there and the courtroom's packed. When they call my name, that judge leaves the bench and then another more experienced judge comes out because he's afraid of me. But I stomped that judge out too. It don't make no difference. You know what I mean? And I did that by making mistakes. So every mistake made me smarter. You know what I mean? I studied this dude for a long time. He's a good dude. I met him in person. Um, hopefully I can get him on my platform one day. You know, he can enlighten y'all because he does this from state to state. You know what I mean? He lives in the courtroom. You know what I mean? And he lives in the court. He knows it. He can tell you when the guard's going to. I can even tell you when the guard's going to start walking by you, holding on his gun, trying to fuck them. All right. Let's go back to the video. I am not addressing the issue of jurisdiction. Black, excuse me, ma'am, for calling to. Uh, according to a federal case law in the United States Constitution and the United States Supreme Court, and when, that the, when the issue law, is raised properly before this court, I will consider. Being raised at any time, man. Excuse me a moment, please. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of talking going on in the courtroom that I can hear. If I can hear it, it is being recorded on our recording system. Two things. I don't think you want people on the recording system to know what you're saying. The second is you're interfering with me. If it continues, I will have to ask you to leave the court. Uh, objection, ma'am. According to Canon 3, a judge to the court to every person who is legally interested in a proceeding of that person's lawyer full right to be heard according to law. Asking us to leave the room, man, is man, asking is you to leave the room at all. You understand what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Stand on your own two feet. You don't got to listen to nothing she's saying. He's putting her on correction. Because you have the right to do that. He knows her job description. Stop being afraid of the judge. Stop being afraid of the feds. I'm going to go over that on my next video. I got something for them, too. They ain't shit neither. Fuck them, too. All right, let's go back to the video. People who are speaking so loudly that well, they are interfering my, with my, the proceedings. My, you ask me, am I going to proceed with the terms? This is my society. And my greatest society exists beyond these walls. They have power of attorney. A written agreement, contractually, that's a constitutional right for us to be able well, to enter What do you want the them to do? Who is it actually that holds the power of my entire, my entire council. This is my council. And what do you want them to do? Council, courtroom according to, to the constitutional no, 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 no. Tell me the actions that you want them to take council. in this courtroom today. Council, I want my... Society members sitting next to you, yes, counseling me. That is not going to happen, sir. Well, that is when you need to Google, man. It is not. Uh, of course, and when you need to please. consult with them, you simply tell me you can step outside. We have a private conference room on the left hand side, you can consult with them there. According they are the not going to sit at the conduct. council table with you. According to the Code of Judicial Conduct, man, that's not stipulated in Article 3. Uh, there are a lot of things court. that aren't stipulated in Article 3, including the fact that that you and I need to consult with one another. We need to be polite to one another. Absolutely, That's not there. Absolutely. So there are a lot of things that aren't there. I'm being polite as possible, as possible ma'am. I'm not suggesting otherwise. Okay. So. And just to add for the record, once more. Is this all for the record? Yes, this Okay, then you let me know when you're finished putting it on the record, and then you and I will consider, continue with our discussion. Ma'am, jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. See, like Tanner versus Hop. I'm raising jurisdictional issues right now, ma'am. They're asking me to uh, assert whether or not I will have an attorney at law be representing me. That is impossible, unlawful, and illegal, and that is against your constitutional oath if you force me to get an attorney at law. I've already asserted the fact that jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. Of course, must prove on record all jurisdiction facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. We can't proceed uh, until jurisdiction is proven. You finish? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The issue we are going to discuss today, and I'm going to repeat this for the last I'm time. I'm going to court, ma'am, to dismiss this case for lack of jurisdiction. Denied. 
Do you want the court? If, if don't repeat yourself four times, please. I listen carefully. I write things down. If you wish to file that sort of an application with the court, it can be filed in writing upon, notice, filed, upon notice to everyone involved. I am not going to repeat myself again. I cannot conduct this proceeding with noise from the front row. If you lady, ma'am, and you gentlemen want to stay here, be quiet. I'm not a gentleman, ma'am. I'm a noble man, just for record. If you are a Moorish American, that <laughs> Yeah, that's my man. I showed you another verse that said that it's all wordplay. I'm not a gentleman. I'm a nobleman. We'll get to that another time, though. All right. So the bottom line is, she's trying to establish control, but she can't. She's pretty good, though. You know, she stands her ground. She's not like the other judge that walked out of the courtroom that was getting frustrated with this. You know, the guy that knew his rights, the mountain man. You know what I'm saying? Um, this one's got patience. Like I said, uh, all judges don't really know how to deal with us. And so they're scared of us and they just don't really want us to come back to court because bottom line, they can't proceed. You know, all they're doing is playing ping pong. She's trying to establish control, which, you know, this is all that happens in the courtroom. She's She can do it for as long as she can take it. And all she's going to do is postpone the case for another date. That's what they do, because if they can't move forward, they can't proceed. You know, usually court cases don't take that long. You know, they get you to, or how do you plead? You plead guilty. Okay, we're going to postpone this. Once they got your plea, now they, you know, they're going to line you up. They're going to postpone it for another day. Okay, we got a guilty plea. They're going to pitch you, give you a lawyer. You know what I mean? You get a lawyer. Um, okay, they're talking about this is their offer. This is the prosecutor's offer. All right? You either want to take it to trial or you want to cop out. Okay. For instance, you're driving out a license. How do you plead not guilty? Okay. We're going to postpone it to X, Y, whatever. Okay. You come back, they appoint you a lawyer. Uh, the prosecutor said, oh, you can get up to a year in jail, but uh, we'll settle for a fine of $500 and a surcharge of $75. So the judge said, okay, you want to do that? Meaning you don't got to do no jail time. You give us $500 and a $75 uh, surcharge and no points off your license. You want to do that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. People just happy that they ain't got to go to jail when they don't even know they ain't got to go to jail in the first place. You know what I'm saying? They have no idea. And that lawyer that they appointed him to walked him right in that goddamn fucking rabbit hole and screwed him. Let's go back to the video. This sovereign man, whatever you are, be quiet in my courtroom. I cannot do this with people talking in the audience. Can jurisdiction be proved, man? Sir, we are not dealing with the issue. I've told you before. You want to raise that issue, you file an appropriate motion. It has been filed, man. No, I haven't seen it yet. I'll deal with it when I see it. It's uh, not in the appropriate form. It's not going to get dealt with. The issue today is whether you are able to proceed in this proceeding with a lawyer or without a lawyer. I'll be proceeding, ma'am, and appropriate to sign this adjust with the right of my society and law firm to consult me. Well, all of that is well and good. The decision I'm going to make today is whether you are going to have an attorney at law who is admitted to practice law in the state of New Jersey or represented you. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, the, the practice of law cannot be licensed by any state, sport versus swear. A, pl a plenary license is not a practice, a, law, uh, a license. You know, what's the case that you just cited? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we, they can go on and on for days with this. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like I said, she's an experienced judge. She knows what she's doing, but I don't care how experienced she is. You see, she's not proceeding and moving forward. She's playing ping pong with him. She keeps saying what she's going to do. He keeps telling her what she's not going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. This is him again. All right. Check this out. Hold on. Here we go. I am not making an application. I gave you an affidavit of fact. It is your duty to dismiss this case because this court has no jurisdiction. And the complaint warrant, according to the governing rules of the courtroom for the state of New Jersey, has been signed.
Is there anything else that you want to tell me before I make my decision concerning whether this case will proceed with a lawyer or without a lawyer? Uh, I would like to say from the next. All right. She's trying to act like she, you know, she can't make you get a lawyer. She can't make you do anything you don't want to do. He knows that. She's just trying to stand her ground. Okay? So he's still in charge. Pay attention. That jurisdiction hasn't been proven. I agree with you. I agree with you that you have raised that issue and it needs to be a result. And the reason why she's trying to impose a master, a.k.a. a lawyer on him, she's trying to do that just like the mountain man. She tried to put a lawyer on him because they can't proceed if you're not under judge jurisdiction and you don't consent. The lawyer is going to get you in the jurisdiction. So keep your money in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you don't need that dude. Trust me. He's going to get you screwed. All right? I don't care how many cases he won. I don't care what his reputation is. I don't care how much respect he got. He ain't as powerful as you if you stand on your constitutional oath and rights. And he knows that. That's what makes him a crook. Because he knows that. He knows you don't need him. Okay? She cannot proceed. She's playing ping pong with him and his comrade. Because they can't proceed. And that's what they that's how they make their money off procedures. Okay? So stop them from proceeding on you and stop consenting and stop being afraid. Because fear comes from ignorance. Okay? So like I said, let's not wait till we get locked up. And they don't have the constitution. I wrote uh, you know, a couple of people some after some some strong shit that's locked up. And um, you know. You know, them, them, them guards and they were scared you know saying? of them when they got that paperwork. You know what I'm saying? So um, don't wait to go to jail and sit in law, law, law library because they don't have nothing about the Constitution in there. They don't want you knowing about that. Because if you find out about that, all those guards in, in them jails, you can sue them and they can go to jail themselves. So they don't want you knowing that. They, you, in law library, they ain't going to have stuff like this in there. You know, they're not. So study now. Make it a part of make it a part of your everyday life. You know, make it a part of you know your playlist. You know, whatever music you play. You know, one two one two microphone check. You know, make it a part of your life. Make it a part of your outfit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. You know what I'm saying, solving free men, support the e men. Cocaine dope boys, all of the tree men just buy back land, a ticket back hand to hand. This is our land. Geronimo never ran. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's on my rhymes and my raps. I'm saying, I live it. It's in my attire. You know what I'm saying, I'm very famous down at the courtroom in the town I'll be in. You know what I'm saying, when I walk in there, you know, shout out to my man Ring. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he was already famous down there. I would go down there with him. So, you know, they, they shake. The guards, all of them shake when they see me. They don't like me, but they respect me. I'd rather be respected than liked any day. Just like the lion in the jungle. Let's go back to the video. And the record shall so reflect that you have raised it and that I have told you that. Anything else you want to say? Until this court can prove jurisdiction, these proceedings are colorable, fraudulent, and I will be proceeding with the law because it always provides a remedy, and I will be filing criminal charges, and I will be filing criminal charges and civil suits in federal court regarding this issue. Anything else you want to say? Always remember, you see, the prosecutor has nothing to say because the prosecutor needs the judge help in order to do their job. There's no lawyer. 1724 Christian Black Codes. We went over that in the last video. Okay, Google that. 1724 Christian Black Codes. That's how they operate. A slave cannot be, he cannot defend himself without his master. So that means you nickel, black, colored, white, Hispanic, you're a slave. You're a fake person. Prosecutor ain't saying nothing. They can't proceed. 
The prosecutor is the one that has is bringing the case to the judge. The prosecutor is the one with the beef. <laughs> but he ain't got nothing to say because he can't continue with his beef because he needs the judge is trying to help him. You see what I'm saying? No, they can't move forward. They playing ping pong. So the prosecutor is pretty bored. He can't do nothing. He's like a little kid over there that need his big need his big sister or big brother to fight for him. Pussy. All right, let's go back. Nothing else for the record other than jurisdiction hasn't been proven for the record. And I'm here under threat to Russian coercion. She's just playing mind games. That's what she's doing. Prosecutor's useless. Can't do shit. Mind games before she's playing. You said everything you want to say? I was long ago concluded, man. Okay. I'm going to uh, render my ruling now then. On April 22nd, 2008, an indictment was filed. It was handed down by the grand jury. And the title of the indictment, and it's indictment 2008-04-0441. And the caption of the indictment is the state of New Jersey versus Brandon Casimir, also known as Cheyenne M. Casimir L. There is another defendant, Cornell C. Dixon, also known as Colonel Chauncey L., I'm also sorry, known as Cornell Hall. I'm not Brandon Casimir. There have been lengthy discussions in this courtroom with regard to whether Brandon Casimir is a real life person, not a real life person, uh, someone who used to exist, who doesn't exist now. There's been a lot of discussion about that. The Moorish American Aboriginal Indigenous Sovereign Man who stands in my courtroom this afternoon has advised me that his name is Cheyenne Matuto Kushimir L. Objection, man. My name is not Cheyenne Matuto Kushimir L. That is my attribute. A name is a name or label of a corporation. I told you, no name, no game. Well, this is a new piece of information. I've never put on the record, man, for the record, that uh, my name was Brandon Casimir. The Moorish American Aboriginal Indigenous Sovereign Man I am, who stands yes. in my courtroom today has the attribute... Cheyenne Matuto, Pushamir L. Mutota. M-U-T-O-T-A. The issue in the hearing today. All right. Now, I didn't even mean to even be here this long, but, you know, like usually in a regular court case, you know, I can find another video or whatever. It's usually when the prosecutor ain't got nothing to say, the judge dismisses the case. Like I said, the prosecutor is the one with the beef. 
You know what I'm saying? Not the not not, not the judge. The judge is just the juror of fact. She's there to judge, you know, but she's trying to help the prosecutor because this is how they make their money. You know what I'm saying? By slaying people and getting the procedure. So, like I said, the prosecutor has nothing to say, so the case should be dismissed. And the judge know this, but they're trying to give him a hard time. You know, like I said, some courtrooms are tough, but the name of the game is you stand in your square no matter what. Because they can't do nothing as long as you stand in your square. She can't make no ruling. She can't do nothing. She's just wasting this time. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason why he's going back to court because they took his property and he's trying to get his property back, which eventually he did. You know, they actually made a video on what happened with that. Um, you know, like I said, you're dealing with criminals. You're dealing with legal criminals that bring legal tyranny in your life. You know, and a lot of people walking around, like, you know, like with the Young Thug situation, like every platform you go to, you know, shout out to all the platforms, Doggy Diamond, Hassan Campbell, you know, thousand others, you know what I mean? Flip the script with all of them, you know, but they're telling you, yo, see, you got that's why you can't do this, and that's why you can't do that. Y'all, y'all little niggas need to be, you know, careful and, you know, uh, you know, do this, and that's because they don't know the law neither. You're not a criminal. If you don't have an injured party, you didn't commit a crime. Corpus delecta. Okay? I'm going to read that. I'm going to give you all that before I get out of here. All right? In no disrespect to those platforms. I, I love all those platforms. You know what I mean? I would love uh, for those platforms to actually know this as well so we can start helping each other. You know what I'm saying? And and, and doing what we got to do to free ourselves from this legal tyranny. You're being We're being bullied by people that took an oath to uphold the law and they know that the people don't know the law so they bully them and take advantage of them and it's, that's why i call it a legal tyranny legal don't override law law overrides legal okay so what i'm teaching is law and that's how you beat these legal you know tyrannies that they try to you know enslave you with you understand what i'm saying all right where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there could be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. Miranda versus Arizona, 384 U.S. 436, 125. I'm going to read that again. Where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or leg legislations which can abrogate them. So as soon as you bring up the Constitution, whatever statute code, whatever statute or penal code can't override that. And they know that. He kept fighting back with the Constitution. She kept trying to hit him with them bullshit penal codes and statutes, which is irrelevant. She didn't take an oath to that. She took an oath to the United States Constitution to keep her job. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to read it again and write it down. Miranda versus Arizona. You can Google it. 384 U.S. 436, 125, where rights secured by the constitutions are involved, there could be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. Now, the most important fact of me showing you these videos, you can't go in there thinking that the judge is going to, the judge ain't telling nobody that they're right. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, they're not. They're criminals. So don't go in there thinking if the judge or a lawyer don't agree with you, that it's wrong. No, I'm showing you these videos to show you how much they're criminal. They they didn't agree with them, but they couldn't prosecute them and do nothing to them either. You understand what I'm saying? They couldn't do that. So that's what you understand. The judge go, oh, yo, you're right. So don't go over there looking for support and looking for uh, um uh, um for them to validate you. They're against you. They're not going to validate you. Some judges honor their oath. That, like I said, I've been in courtrooms where. I wrote affidavits to people, you know what I mean? And the judge just kicked it out because they didn't want to deal with that shit. They were like, oh, I don't feel like dealing with that headache. You know, I've told you, I'm like, look, you got enough people in this courtroom that you can pick on, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> that don't know no better. You know, throw my shit out. Some of them have. You got 40 people in here that you're about to rob that don't know no better. You ain't robbing me. I'm not having it. Okay, we're going to postpone this case so that I will call back to court. I'm like, yo, is that, no, no, we don't have you on it. They'll just get rid of the case. They'll just toss it to the side. 
because they know they're not going to go further with me. They already know that. They understand that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying nobody ever said, oh, yeah, you No. It's not like that. That's why I'm showing you these videos. Okay? Officers of the court have no immunity when violating constitutional rights from liability, for they are deemed to know the law. Owens versus Independence. 100 SCT 1398 455 US 622. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating the constitutional right from constitutional right from liability. Read it one more time. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating the constitutional right from liability. Owens versus Independence. 455 US 622. Okay. Uh, shout out to Hocus 4 Fifth, BX in the house. That's my home. You know what I mean, that's my throne right there. But yo, so um, but shout out to him because one thing I like about him that I actually love that he did, um, he he talks about when he got um when he came uh when he won his trial that he unfortunately had to go through with his family. Shout out to S12. I met him before, and he was real nice in his prime too. The whole bang bang boogie back then. All right, but. Uh, I don't want to get off track, but what he did that I really love that he did, you know, whether he's, you know, aware of what I'm talking about or not. OK, when he was found not guilty, he sued the justice system and he got paid for it. I'm only repeating it because he repeated that, you know, and he wanted people to know that. So that's a good point. He was brave enough, you know, he couldn't take his boys in there with him. He had to do that on his own. He had enough courage to do that on his own. You understand what I'm saying? He did it. And he won. For one reason. I'm going to read it again. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating the constitutional right from liability. Owens versus independence. So no matter how long it was, he had that right. You know? And he won. Most people will like, find out guilty. They just run out the goddamn jail and just go for freedom. You know? A lot of dudes in jail, you know, you hear like, yo, when I get down, when I get out, I'm run down on this nigga, I'm gonna run down on that nigga. Instead of running down on the judge that, that that screwed you, instead of running down on the prosecutor that violated you. Shout out to Hocus 4 Fifth. He ran down on that judge and he ran down on that justice system that kept him off the streets for four years and couldn't prove that he was wrong and couldn't prove he was guilty. He ain't go out there picking on innocent people that never did shit to him. He went picking on the people that that that, that deserved it. That bullied him. He bullied them right back. Give me that bread. And he won. Salute to him. That's what everybody needs to start doing. And when I get out, I'm going to run down. No, you ain't running out on nobody. If you ain't got enough courage to run, step to that judge that screwed your constitutional rights, you a sucker. So leave innocent people alone and go after the justice system that violated you. Shout out to Hocus 4 Fifth. More of our people need to start doing that. Okay? And that's why I'm doing these classes. I'm doing it from my heart. And this is my contribution to uplifting humanity. Okay, salute. I'm like, you know, Islam, I'm a Mobite, I'm a Moor, but this ain't just for them. This is for everybody. I don't care what you look like. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why it's important to help everybody because every time somebody pays them and gives them money, whether it's physical or whether it's um, um, financially, you're empowering them to bully other people. So we got to cut this out. Stop stop giving them money. Stop giving them time. Because what you're doing, every, every dollar you give them, you're arming them up and making them stronger to come after your children, to come after your family members, to come after your neighbors, you know what I'm saying? to come after your friends, to come back after you. Shut them down. They don't deserve it anyway. All right, let me see if there's one more thing or whatever I want to go over. All right, next the next video I'm gonna go over the feds and I'm gonna you know because everybody's so afraid of them, they ain't no fucking body neither. You know what I'm saying? And they know they ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying so, but the only thing is that you don't know that they ain't nobody. 
All right. And uh, we're going to go over that, too. You know what I mean? So uh, next time we'll go over the federal situation and uh, break that down. I want to go over the peace treaty of 1786. OK, because uh, he said something about the treaty that they're supposed to honor. OK, and uh, that has a lot to do with the movie 300. We'll bring that in um, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right. So, um, you know, shout out to everybody. WAPO stands for way of peace and opportunity. Learn how to stand on your own two feet in the courtroom like a real man supposed to. Salute.